This was my very first piano. I taught myself to play when I was an engineering student at Illinois. Illinois had and still does have an excellent music school, so there were no shortage of pianos for me to play on. During the school day, whenever I just felt like walking over to the music department, I could always find something to work on. But when I graduated, I moved into an apartment and they had a strict no-noise policy. I understand that. A couple of long years I spent without a piano at all. But when I bought my first house in 1991, I knew one of the very first things I wanted to buy was a piano. Went to a piano store and was sticker shocked by the prices there. Most of the instruments out on the floor were in the ten dollars to $20,000 range. I told them what my budget was and the salesperson said, well, you know, we have this thing in the back you might be interested in. And they took me into the back of the showroom and this thing was sitting here. It was selling for $395. And not only that, they were willing to ship it. They were willing to bring it to my house for $395. Try pricing how much it costs to move a grand piano. They were pretty much giving this thing to me. So they were pretty open about this. The wood has started to dry out and it was having trouble holding its tune in the upper part of the register there. But you know what? This was my first piano. I felt as if I'd hit the lottery. Okay, so what is it? Well, it's a Kimball Grand, and judging by the serial number on the plate, it hails from around 1919. So they weren't kidding when they said the wood had started to dry out. That is actually the most serious thing that can happen to a piano, because the piano is substantially made of wood. Yes, the plate is made of cast iron, but when the screws from the pins go into what they call the pin block, that is actually the most important piece of wood in the piano because the pin block has to have enough moisture in it to hold the tension in the pins so that the, pitch, so that the strings can stay at the right pitch. If the wood starts to dry out, the pins start to slip and they lose their ability to hold pitch. This is especially true at the high end when the strings are at a higher tension. Many people think that a cracked soundboard is a sign of a bad piano, but in fact, you know, a cracked soundboard usually isn't all that big a deal but a dried out pin block is usually a sign that the piano is on its last legs. I didn't care. Again, I was so happy to have this thing in my home. So when you're shopping for a piano, a couple of things you want to watch out for. And one of the first pieces of advice is don't get a free piano. The old adage is a free piano is usually overpriced. It's just making a stop at your place before going to the dump. Usually if a piano is being given away, the pin block has long since dried out and it's never going to hold pitch again. Now you can get somebody, you can pay someone to refit and manufacture a brand new pin block, string the whole thing up over again, but by the time you pay for the enormous amount of labor it takes to do that, well, it's probably going to be worth more than the price of the piano. Okay, so when many people go shopping for a piano, many of them want a grand piano. They don't want an upright. They think the grand looks nicer. And I agree, grand pianos do look quite nice. But there's something I want to caution you about here, and this is another standard piece of advice. Many people use the term grand piano and baby grand piano interchangeably, when in fact this is not technically correct. A baby grand refers to a very small size of grand piano and the size sort of differs a little bit depending on who you listen to, but in general, five feet or shorter would be considered a baby grand. You measure a piano by from the back to the front, and this one, in fact, is four foot seven. A true baby grand is a piano that you don't want to buy. <laughs> there just isn't enough space in there for them to do everything that they need to do. The size of the soundboard is actually quite small, and you have to be honest with yourself here. What are you going to do with the piano? If you're actually going to play it, try to get out of that baby grand size. Try to get something longer than about five feet. If you're using it primarily as a piece of furniture, which is, again, a very valid use for something like this, then you know, go ahead, buy whatever you want. So instead of getting a small grand like this one, you're actually better off buying a large upright. A 48 inch upright will actually have a better sound quality and it'll play better than a small grand like this one. And I'll give you one recommendation. The Yamaha U1 series is just a fantastic piano. And looking back, it's probably what I should have bought as a musical instrument instead of one of these. 
So I've since purchased a much better piano, and this one is, well, it's been relegated to furniture. My piano tuner came in here a couple of years worth of tunings that he had done, and he said, you know what, it's probably not worth the time for me to come back and charge you to tune this. It's not going to hold its tune you know, much anymore. So this has not been tuned since the mid-2000s. That is a very long time. And as you can hear, it is... Oh, that is awful, isn't it? So it's been sitting here as a piece of furniture. But recently, my piano technician came back to me and he said, you know, there's a new process out there that can at least temporarily restore the pin block. There's a doping fluid that can pour around the pins to make it hold the tuning pins a little bit tighter. And it's known to last a few years at least. The jury's kind of still out about the long-term prospects. Uh, and he said, you want to go ahead and try this? And he's willing to charge me a minimal amount of money to do this and tune it more you know, as an experiment to him than anything else. And I want to see this maybe restored to musical playing condition myself. So I figured, I got nothing to lose here. Let's go ahead and try it. Okay, so we're back. The piano technician has been here and it took him about four to four and a half hours to work on the piano. So visually there isn't really th anything that's different about what you're seeing here, but there has been a great deal of work done internally. The pin block has been treated, there was a string that had to be repaired, and the action was regulated, and the piano was tuned. So we're not completely done here. There is a damp chaser humidity control system that has to be put in. We didn't do that because there is a bracket that was missing, and that's going to have to be done about a month and a half or so now when he comes back. And the other thing is the action regulation and the tuning is going to have to be touched up in about that time, about a month and a half, because what happens is when you do this much work to a piano, it suffers what, for lack of a better term, might be called trauma. And when you try to tune it, uh, the piano has thousands of pieces in it, and it does, has to figure out how to settle back down to its steady state. So the tuning that you do initially after some work that's been done onto it doesn't always hold. So we wait about a month and a half or so to make sure that everything settles down, and then we do everything again. So as far as the action regulation goes, a piano has 88 keys. If the, uh, if the keys haven't been regulated, it sometimes feels as if you are playing 88 different pianos. The keys don't strike at the same location, they don't feel the same, and you can get very confused playing it. But overall, I think I'm very pleased with the way this has gone. Again, I didn't think this piano could be revived, but you know, it doesn't actually sound all that bad. So let's take a look.
Okay, so there you have it, a look at a piano restoration. I am very pleased that this thing was able to be revived. It's been sitting here for a good 20 years, and I never thought I'd be able to use this thing again. So we do need to be clear here, this is never going to be a concert-grade instrument. It's just too small, and it was never intended for that purpose. But I think for many casual uses, this thing could actually be played and enjoyed. So again, I'm very pleased that I was able to revive this thing. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting and useful to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.